Hey everybody, thanks for watching and thank you for purchasing or downloading this video. Um, of course, I appreciate you guys support as always, and I really appreciate you guys um, supporting me, you know, up until this point, you know, these videos that I put out, you know, on DVD, uh, most of them or almost all of them goes with the Saturn Satan series in some way, shape or form. It's just, you know, major parts of the series that I can't fit into the series itself that I have to make these separate DVDs to go with it so you guys can understand. And you'll see in this DVD, it's a major part of, you know, what's going on in the universe and, and everything like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys took the time to purchase it. This topic is something that a lot of people have talked about and asked me about um, personally. And um, as far as the series goes, and it's something that, you know, I said that it would go with this series that I would put it out eventually especially pertaining to the rules because i always talk about in the series there are rules and you go, you guys are going to understand what that is in this video you're going to understand what that all means so now you know i want you guys for a second to just basically um you know clear your head of everything you have been taught you know for a second if you can do that if it's possible just clear your head and i want you to think about where you are you know, relative to the sun, the moon, and the stars. Just think about where you are at in your room, in your living room, or what have you. Where you stand or sit relative to the sun, the moon, and the stars. You probably can see the sun right now. You probably can see the moon. This is where you are. So I want you to just go back and, uh, you know, think about the ancients who basically used common sense. You know, they looked up and they seen the sun felt the power of the sun they seen the moon and they know the moon came out you know when it was dark you know so they understood that whatever they were standing on probably resembles the sun and the moon and they understood that you know the earth has to be you know floating there in outer space just like the sun and the moon that they can look up and see and remember there are also about five planets that you can see with the naked eye so they can see these things and see that, you know, what we are standing on that we call Earth or whatever they called it is possibly the same thing. So, again, they use common sense. So you walk the Earth for however many years. You have never seen the Earth produce a human being, produce an animal. What you know for sure, for certain is that you come from your mother. Your mother had you and everybody else came from a woman, a female. Animals come from animals or what have you. So we know that this earth, this planet that we sitting on, this massive rock does not produce humans or animals. So that being said, that being the case, of course, obviously we had to be placed here. And this is what they realized. They say, you know what? Something put us here because we don't come from here. And this is what you got to understand. So them back then not having to worry about, you know, paying bills, not having to worry about, um, you know, what time Walking Dead comes on or how a person was killed or who was killed on Walking Dead and stupid stuff like that. They had the time to sit and ponder that very thing and they looked up out into the heavens and they said to themselves, you know, what the fuck is out there? What is going on? Something put us here. That's for a fact. You have to understand. And it's something I waited to this point to really get into and try to pound into people's head because we talk about this and we touch on it and people put out YouTube videos. But I don't think people really get it based off of what I just said. We are the extraterrestrials. We are. We are not native to this planet. That is a fact. We do not come from here. I mean, I don't understand how people don't see that because, you know, we have been completely brainwashed and bombarded with so much stuff that we cannot see that obvious fact that we don't come from here based on what I just spoke on. The planet, no matter how long it sits, will not grow human beings. Think about that. So we have been placed here by who, by what, you know, we'll probably get into that. But um, 
This is what they pondered and they thought about for centuries. And they, um, they looked out into the heavens and, you know, the universe, space. And, you know, and they saw things and they knew they had to catalog it. So now, of course, those who were, you know, intelligent enough to comprehend the, um, the, uh, the ramifications or the, uh, to comprehend basically the implications of us being placed on this earth. They watched the heavens because they felt like, well, I need to see what the hell is out there just in case whoever put us here comes back. I mean, think about that. When you get that realization, that understanding that you have been put here, you're going to watch to see, you know, who comes back or what's going on out there. Because, you know, it's like you putting a fish in a fish tank and, you know, the fish is in a tank. And maybe it has the knowledge that it came from somewhere else and maybe it came from a pet store. But it does know that it can see outside of its its uh, tank and it can see that it's stuff out there and that it was placed there. You know, even if it died and had offspring somehow, like another fish was put in there and they had, you know, two fish or whatever. The, the, uh, the fish who come later would still be able to see that. Well, wait a minute. We are inside of a tank. So, of course, they could see that they were we were placed on the earth. So they had to think that, um, you know, this was something that was done for a reason and they needed to understand that reason. Now, a lot of people laugh and we joke about UFOs and extraterrestrials and stuff like that. And people don't realize that, you know, as I said, we are the extraterrestrials. We have been placed here and, you know, this planet exists in a part of the universe that basically supports and creates matter. It is basically what it is. You know, this planet is in a low vibratory section of the universe that creates and supports matter. That's like my own conclusion that I've come to. And I feel like, um, you know, if, if it's conscious, it has the ability to either become matter or not. But if it's not conscious, it will take the form of matter. And since the universe, which we'll get into, is basically infinite. I mean, the possibilities of what could be going on here is endless when you really start to get into it and think about it. But, I mean, at that basic beginner level. Now, understand when I talk about beginner, I'm talking about the people who came up out of this catastrophe. The people who came up out of whatever event took place that basically destroyed most of the planet and caused people to live underground and stuff like that. Remember, when they came back out, the so-called cavemen, when they came back out or uh, the earth dwellers or whatever you want to call them, when they came back out, they really had no knowledge of what the hell happened. Few people, few civilizations had knowledge of things that took place prior. And we see that as being evident in the, uh, of course, the uh, Egyptian civilizations, which is why everybody came into Egypt to learn, because for some reason, it seemed like they knew, you know, what happened. So when you look at the fact that the position and placement of the earth is so perfect, as far as the aspect of, you know, creating life, you know, something that that impossible has to be done on purpose. When you look at the fact that, you know, during an eclipse, a total eclipse, that the uh, the moon basically covers up the sun uh, as to appear as if, you know, it's larger than the sun or the same size as the sun. Well, we know that the sun is about 400 times the size of the moon. So, you know, this is something that you have to look at as being, you know, something that is purposely done, that has a reason behind it. You can't leave it up to chance when you look into space and you see so much going on that these things happen within the heavens, you know, at these certain dates and times. This is some kind of, you know, divine uh, order or some kind of purpose. It's a reason for this stuff. And this is how it was looked at by the ancients. They can look at these things. They study the stars because they knew, you know, Something placed us here. I mean, you can go to the the deepest microscopic view of everything on this planet. You will not find human beings at that level. So 
again, we didn't come from this planet. This planet did not create us. And by that definition alone, by that fact, everybody has to wake up and snap out of the bullshit and see that for a fact. I mean, it's damn near common sense. Obviously, something put us here. And, you know, this is what they really wanted to get to the bottom of. Now, there are many civilizations who speak about, you know, coming from the stars or beings coming from the stars. Now, if you're looking out there and you believe this where you come from, in order for you to understand, you know, where you come from and your purpose on this planet, then you must first study the stars. So, of course, when you look out there, what do you see? You know, they seem you know, uh, the constellations, they seen the stars, they seen the five planets that's visible, visible to the naked eye. You see the sun, of course, you see the moon. So, you know, we have basically, uh, 88 constellations that we know of. Now, we also know that 12 of those constellations, uh, basic, basically our sun, the planets and the moon go through these 12 constellations, you know, the zodiac. So this is stuff that you could see, uh, and um, calculate. Then this is what the ancients did. They took note of these things. They took note that the sun passed through a certain constellation, you know, during a certain time. The same, the same thing with the sun and the planets. So they calculated this stuff because, of course, if you believe that you come from space, you are paying attention to what's out there. Because you, I mean, it's so much stuff. Have you ever been to a place or a country where at night, I mean, being, I remember out to sea when I was in the Navy, sometimes uh, being on a boat was to go to the flight deck at night. And when you look up, I mean, it's almost like being on a spaceship in outer space because the stars and everything so, uh, it's so clear out at sea. I mean, you can see everything. It, it looks crazy. It's a crazy view that um, a lot of people don't get a chance to see. And I can imagine back then, that, you know, they probably seen uh, the universe the same way. And it probably was amazing to them. And they probably seen stuff flying back and forth and, you know, what have you. So, you know, they paid attention. They cataloged this stuff and they, and, you know, they wrote it down over the years and with thousands of years. So, of course, when you notice things like um, when the sun is uh, in this constellation, it's colder here or it's warmer here. You know, you take note of this kind of stuff. So, of course, over time, as you're paying attention, you will notice things like when the sun is in this constellation that we have winter or we have summer or the leaves start to die, you know, things of that nature. So, of course, you will look at the stars as somehow, you know, controlling what takes place on the planet. And this is how a lot of the, you know, you can call them primitives or, uh, you know, the ancients looked at things like when this constellation appears, uh, you know, we don't see the buffalo no more. So. Food is scarce or things don't grow. So, of course, to them, not having the same kind of mindset that we have, they looked at this stuff as, you know, gods and they deified the uh, constellations and, you know, different civilizations saw different things. They deified them based upon the actions or the animals or whatever it looked like to them, which is why a lot of different civilizations have different uh, constellations. You know, we don't have the rat like the, uh, eight, the Chinese do. So. Different constellations meant different things to different uh, civilization, different groups of people. And um, when you understand the culture, you can understand why they use a lot of the animals and things that they do. But, you know, so they deify these things. And a lot of people, I'm not going to say it was worship. It was just so much as taking notice of what they seen in the heavens. And, you know, we look at stuff as, ooh, worship and this and that. It's not, you know, the same to them. Of course, if you know... Uh, this constellation is bringing abundance of uh, life or food to my people, then, of course, I'm going to celebrate every time this const the sun is in its constellation, you know, so on and so forth. And this is what the ancients did, and they cataloged this stuff. And this stuff is ancient, it's old, and it goes back, you know, very, very far. You know, the understanding of, one, that the uh, sun did move and land in certain constellations as well as the moon and the other five planets visible to the naked eye just to know that and to have the uh you know the mindset to ca to calculate this stuff and to um you know take note of this and i'm you're gonna find out later why and how so um they did this this is what the ancients did and this right here when you get into you know uh astrology or astronomy this is basically the basis 
for all religion, you know, across across the world. You're going to see that in this video. And that's basically what they did. They deified the constellations and made up stories. And they basically taught with pictures. It was easier this way. We know the ancient Egyptians did the same. They taught with pictures. And it's, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. A lot of people say that, but it's easier for you to remember a picture versus, you know, a long word. You know, if I, I'd rather show you a picture of a rhinoceros than have you remember the word rhinoceros. You know what I'm saying? So it's just easier for you to see that picture for you to immediately, immediately associate that rhinoceros with whatever it does. And this is what they did with the constellation so people could understand. And it was easier for them to teach it, you know, to the kids. So now and them looking up into the heavens at the the moon and the planets and the sun, of course, the sun would be the most revered because without the sun, you know, everything dies. All life basically in the, the universe, in the solar system, I should say, uh, basically dies without the sun and uh, any life that is. So, you know, the sun was the most revered. It was it was deified the most you know, through the civilizations around the world. And, you know, you might have a different name for the sun, uh, depending on uh, where it appeared uh, as far as the constellations in the north and the south. You know, if it appeared in the north, it might have been a uh, cold. So the sun to you might have represented, you know, a cold god or something like that during that time in the north. In the south, it might be warm. So maybe a warm god and might represent a different god during that time in the south. So now the thing is, every 11 and a half years, due to the rotation of the sun, we get sun spotting. Now, the thing is, when these sunspots begin to form, at first glance, it takes on the form of a winged serpent. So basically a serpent with wings or this is where you see in Kemet, you see it a lot, the uh, winged sun disk or the winged serpent. This is where all this comes from. We're talking about the appearance of sunspots every 11 and a half years and the first sight of these sunspots takes on the appearance of a winged serpent so now when you go down to mexico and you see the uh pyramid of the flying serpent and you can see that you know they must have took this stuff seriously or else they wouldn't have built such a you know large temple uh to their to the deity to the snake deity and you know this is something that a lot of people go down to see in mexico and uh, i'm going to explain later i want to get into it right now but you know things like this is what the ancients saw and they deified all this stuff because to them i mean you got to really take your mindset off of you know today and think about back then a primitive civilization not really primitive though and i mean really spiritual and that's something i'm going to get into that that you know we have lost today that they had you're going to understand what that is so you know they looked at this stuff and it's something to them so they build the pyramid the simple fact that they built it is something that you should be in awe of and i'm going to get into a while later you know this stuff gets deep this is one of my more deeper videos i want you guys to really get this information because it's going to make a lot of sense now we know that the winged uh sun disc is basically an aspect of ra so we can see that in the uh the omex or down in mexico the aztecs whatever they want to say whatever they want to call them is basically you know they have their sun gods as well as the Egyptians. So we know about Quetzalcoatl, who is basically the uh, winged serpent. And when you go down to Chichen Itza in uh, Mexico, and of course, they have the pyramid down there as well. Now, as I was saying before, all of this. Now, remember, we're talking about astrology here. We're talking about the sun. This is the sun. A lot of people might think, well, they crazy for spending all them hours uh, building that huge a pyramid for, you know, just because sunspots look like a winged serpent, it sounds crazy. It's going to make a lot of sense later. But, you know, as I said, this stuff is the basis of religion. This is where all this stuff comes from. When you look at it, you can find it everywhere. Whenever you find something that's ancient, that has an ancient story attached to it, I guarantee you, you're going to look in the Bible, the Quran or Torah, and you're going to find a similar story or somebody trying to rip it off. And it has to always do with religion. So you have Quetzalcoatl, which is the winged serpent that is basically uh, speaking about the sun. 
And what a lot of people don't realize is the Mormons believe that Quetzalcoatl is basically the resurrected Jesus Christ. And yes, they actually believe this. So they believe that uh, Jesus basically was in America and um, he came and appeared and talked to the neophytes who they believe were uh, some Indians, the um, the uh, the Holtwell Indians. They believe they were the Holtwell Indians. So when you read a third neophyte or Nephi in the Book of Mormon, something we have not touched on in you know, any of my videos, the Book of Mormon and some of these other weird religions, which I'm going to start touching on a little bit more so you can see the fuckery, the foolery, excuse me, that's in a lot of this stuff and where it comes from. So when you read in third Nephi, I'm just going to read um, 12 and 13, uh, just so you can understand. So it says... Uh, Jesus calls the 12 disciples. He delivers to the neophytes a discourse similar to the Sermon on the Mount. He speaks the Beatitudes, which basically is like grace or the, uh, the benediction. Uh, he speaks the Beatitudes. His teachings transcend and take precedence uh, over the law of Moses. Men are commanded to be perfect, even as he and his father are perfect. Uh, 13 says, Jesus teaches the neophytes the Lord's prayer. They are to lay up treasures in heaven. The 12 disciples and their ministry are commanded to take no thought for temporal things. Now, I want you to pay attention. Uh, you see the little video before Jesus coming down talking to the people, but I want you to pay attention to what he's walking down. I mean, take a look. Now you can see it's a pyramid and it's basically shaped just like the pyramid in, uh, you know, Chichen Itza, uh, the pyramid of, uh, Quetzalcoatl, the serpent of the sun or the sun serpent or the wing serpent. So we know what Jesus is the sun. So. Jesus, I mean, they're basically telling you in the Book of Mormon, Jesus is the son. So here you have Jesus coming down the pyramid and it's representing Quetzalcoatl, who represents the winged serpent that represents the sunspots that basically is talking about the sun. So it all goes back to the sun. So I want you to understand what we're dealing with here. <laughs> and you're going to find this a lot. We're going to see this a lot throughout the video that, um, yeah, as I said, when you start going back and looking at a lot of these stories, these ancient stories, they deal with uh, astrology and have uh, mythological stories and stuff like that. You're going to find Christianity or some religion ripping it off. And you can see just the example here that, yeah, they're saying that Jesus is Quetzalcoatl, but they're basically trying to tell you that Jesus is the son, which we already know that. So now I wanted to read those two verses in the Book of Mormon so that you could understand you know, what we're dealing with here and what they have done and what they will go through to push this story. I mean, you have a video there that somebody made of these people walking up to Jesus. You talk about the simple fact that they wrote the Book of Mormon and all the stories that surround Jesus Christ and all these deities. I mean, the links that they went through to sell you on these stories is huge. I mean, these stories are filled with people and all kinds of, you know, actions that they go through, things that they face, trials and tribulations, all surrounding the fact that they're only talking about the sun. I mean, this is what they went through. And when you understand this and you, and you look through it and see that, you know, don't get caught up in a story. As I said, like in an old video, don't get caught up in the story. The story is there to give you a message. If you get caught up in the story and the beauty of it and the hope or whatever it entails, you're going to miss the message. The message is there. It's trying to tell you something outright. Now, for anybody who knew about the... Um, Chichen Itza and Quetzalcoatl and everything like that and understand what it pertains to and see that it's talking about the sun. It's easy for you to make that connection of Jesus and the sun. So when we talk about the whole wing sun disc, a wing sun disc, we know we found it in Kemet. But then when we look at Malachi 4.2, it says here, uh, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, son, S-U-N, of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. 
Now, the Bible is replete with astrology. You got to understand that. We know the Old Testament is basically uh, Greek mythology or Greek astrology, basically, that they um, basically stole stories from, um, you know, Kemet. You know, the whole Greek mythology, when you look at it, it's talking about the planets, Hercules and everything like this. We know where it comes from, you know, uh, Pandora's box, uh, even Apple, uh, Noah's Ark, Deucalion and Fira, uh, Zeus, Jesus, so on and so forth, Samson, Hercules. We know where it comes from. So you can look at that clear and see, you know, what it's what it's talking about and where they ripped it off from. It's obvious to a lot of people uh, when you look at the Old Testament, that's basically, you know, where it all comes from. So as I was saying before about the whole uh, Genesis 1, 7, the firmament. I mean, again, when you look at Genesis, I mean, you could just see the clear plagiarism. Soon as you open the book, boom, right in your face, plagiarized. So Genesis 1, 7, talking about the firmament, the waters above the firmament and below the firmament, as I talked about we know they're talking about the waters of Noom and that they stole that from the ancient Egyptian creation story. You know, it's all plagiarism. It's, it's plagiarized. And we know uh, Greek mythology is all in the uh, Old Testament. But, you know, what about the New Testament? OK, so again, we look at Virgo. We look at the constellation Virgo. And what you have is you have the movement of the sun. And what it does is it comes into the uh, constellation uh, Virgo. And as it's coming into following its rotation into the constellation Virgo, you have, when it makes contact, it looking like uh, Virgo, the Virgin, being pregnant. Now, as the sun continues it, its course, you have the sun coming out basically between the legs of Virgo, having it seem as if, you know, a virgin birth, you know, uh, has been done. So you have Virgo giving birth to the sun. And that's all basically uh, it is. Virgo giving birth to the sun, Virgo the virgin, you have a virgin birth. It's all astrology, this is where the shit comes from. And it's crazy that when you look at the cycle and you see uh, this being done, you can see clearly where they got the concept of a virgin birth. Now when we read uh, Revelations 12, it's talking about this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Again, we have Virgo. When you look at Virgo, you have at the bottom of her foot, you can see clearly the moon and its rotation going through its cycle uh, at the foot of Virgo. You can see Virgo being bathed with the sun. This is all talking about the constellations, talking about what's happening in the universe. You can see over top of her head, Leo. Leo can be considered uh, the 12 starred crown that they're referring to, but there are also 12 stars, you know, above her head. So we can consider Leo being the uh, crown that it's talking about. So again, when you look at this stuff, astronomy, astrology, it's all stuff they got from the heavens. As I said, this is where this stuff comes from and this is the basis of modern day religion. And same thing with Revelation 6. When you look at Revelation 6, it says, it's talking about the seals being open. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. Now, and that's basically talking about and that one is pretty clear that it's Sagittarius because of the bow. So it's easy stuff. When you pay attention, you can see what the stuff is really talking about. So now we can do this basically all day and go through uh, stories or constellations and find stories in the Bible that parallel that we can see that they clearly stole from an ancient story that deals with astrology or an ancient story from an ancient civilization. We see this all the time. And it's, it leads to common misconceptions. It leads to problems and issues with a lot of symbols and, you know, what the constellations itself, you know, some people say, oh, don't touch that constellation stuff. Don't trust that, uh, that astrology is the devil. Oh, that's the devil's math and stuff like that. Cause people have no clue what it's talking about. Because of course the Bible would steer you away from stuff like that, from understanding the stars. Because if you understood this stuff, then you can completely debunk the Bible and see what it's really talking about. So another symbol of, you know, a lot of controversy is this, you know, a lot of people see 
see this symbol and they think immediately of Satan, you know, the seal of Satan, uh, witchcraft, conjuring demons and stuff like that, what have you. But now this is Venus. That's all it is. This is Venus, the day star. Venus appears as the morning star in the eastern sky, you know, before sunrise. It's basically all it is. It's the only time you can really see Venus is during this time. So now what happens is every eight years, what people don't realize, every eight years, Venus takes this course and makes basically this pattern, which we see as the star, the day star, you know, Lucifer. The sun of the morning. This is all it's talking about when you look at the Bible and you talk about this stuff and you read this stuff. This is what they're what they're using, what they're talking about. It's all going back to astrology. It's all going back to the ancients and their calculations on what they saw. People never really got that whole separation of Lucifer and Satan. And when you understand, we're talking about, you know, celestial bodies here. We're talking about planets, amazing, beautiful stuff that has nothing to do with people perceive as evil or demonic or what have you based upon whatever movie that they watch. This is something that exists in nature and reality. It's, go it's been here long before any of us. It has been going on. So every eight years, Venus takes this course. It makes this pattern. It has been doing it for a very long time. And a lot of people get confused about it because they don't know. They don't want to take the time. You know, that whole phrase of people being willfully ignorant is so true. And, um, you know, I can't really blame too many people because when you get bombarded with the stuff in movies and in church, I mean, it's tough to deal with. As I said. I bit that bullet years ago where I had to really dig and dive into Satanism and witchcraft and everything like that and learn it and study it to study Crawley and study all the people who was considered to be evil, wicked people and what they was talking about. And, you know, the things that they have uh, was said to have done. And, um, you know, you have to really understand that you know, as I talk about. These people have to be portrayed as such, because if you understood what they were doing, you would understand the power of the powers that be, which we'll get into. So, of course, anything pertain pertaining to voodoo and witchcraft, which is why I made the DVD and to this kind of stuff, which is why I make this DVD as far as astrology, astronomy or what have you. They don't want you touching it. They damn sure don't want you to know the real truth about it, which is what we're going to get into in this video. So now let's get into this thing real quick. Now, after the ancient Egyptians was conquered, after the Greeks came into to Kemet and started getting the information. Now, remember, the Greeks had good relations with the ancient Egyptians. You know, they came in there. Remember, the Egyptians taught everybody, taught the Romans, taught the Asians, taught a lot of people. A lot of people came in Kemet to, to Kemet to get the information. Now, there were some things that they kept, of course, you know, in the uh, Egyptian mystery schools to themselves. There were there is knowledge that they kept. So we know that uh, Tales, people like Pythagoras uh, went. They were in these uh, mystery schools in Kemet. So they learned this information. Now, after the uh, ancient Egyptians was, de was defeated and the Greeks had basically full reign and uh, full control of the knowledge and the information that was in Kemet, you know, they gained the knowledge of basically reality, you know, the the essence of what the ancient Egyptians was trying to achieve. They got that knowledge. And we know that they got that knowledge because they put it in their building, which, you know, I'll explain in, in, in a moment. But you have to realize that um, the universal language, the universal knowledge, what they taught in the mystery schools, the sacred math, sacred geometry or sacred science. This is what it's all about. And math is the language of the universe, whether you realize that or not. And this is what it's really all about. And this is basically the premise, the main thing we're going to get into in this video, math. And a lot of people don't realize how deep this is. Everything is math. When you look out into the universe, it's math. It exists. It's all over the place. Now, in order for you to really grasp this, to, to understand this, you have to just think about nothing, right? 
you have basically this space right here. This space right here is just empty space. It really, if it went on forever, it cannot be calculated really because it's just space. Until you put something there, you know, you can't really get math. But as soon as something exists, as soon as a piece of matter exists, math is everywhere. And let me tell you why. Because from this point now to, let's say, I go from the point at the tip of my finger out 20 yards, you have math. It's got, you got a distance of 20 yards. So now everything that's in this, you know, emptiness is basically going to be relative to this one point. So you had nothing if I go like this. Now we have basically 12 inches right now. We have math. It exists. So if I go, you know, put this here. Now I put my finger here. We have math. We have 12 inches that's relative to this statue. So you get what I'm saying? Since there is matter that exists in this part of the universe, everything is math because everything is relative to something. So in that relativity exists math. There's no way around it. It is the universal language. It's everywhere. We have math. It's, it's no way around that. So they understood this. And what is killer is how we find the patterns of math in so many things. And it, it's, it's like almost looking at everything and seeing that, you know, it's made up of atoms. Then you say, well, we all the same thing. We all matter. We all made up of atoms or what have you. But when you look at the math of the universe, as far as the relativity uh, to things and the math that it consists of, it's mind boggling. And it shows you that there is a creator, a grand architect, because there's no way that this stuff could be a coincidence. So a lot of you have uh, heard about the whole Fibonacci spiral, the Fibonacci sequence, the sequence of numbers that goes uh, one, one, two, uh, one and two is three, two and three is five, you know, three and five is eight, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is the whole Fibonacci sequence and we find this in almost everything in uh, reality, all throughout, you know, the world and, and the universe and the stuff and, this, and uh, galaxies. So now he also talked about the golden number or the golden ratio, which they call the divine proportion, which basically uh, guides matter and the movement of energy in the universe. We can find it in our DNA. We can find it in the proportion of our bodies. Now, we also have pi. Now, pi is basically the uh, circumference of a circle and its uh, diameter. So we're basically talking about the distance around a circle and the distance, you know, in the middle uh, of a circle. Now, why are these things important? These are things that we find replete throughout reality and nature everywhere. I mean, we just find these numbers and we find that they, they, they match up so perfectly as to the point where it has to be studied. You can't just you know, brush it off as a coincidence. You know, it, it's important that we study this stuff because, you know, basically, if I um if I build uh, a doghouse and I build a doghouse uh, relative to the max measurement of a dog. Now, let's say that when you first got the dog, it's a puppy. Now, for some reason, I knew the how big the dog will eventually get right before it got that big it's a puppy now so i built this dog house right and when i build it i build it to the exact specifications of the of the puppy when it will get uh full size so when you see the dog house the dog house is like huge the proportions is is perfect and eventually when a dog grows up the dog it fits perfectly within a dog house and it's like wow you know, when you see something like that, you would say, well, you know, somebody did a great job. Somebody did a perfect job. They knew exactly what they was doing. They understood that this dog would grow to this height, this weight, this proportion that they designed the dog house to fit this dog. This is what we're talking about when we talk about the earth and the universe. It is divinely inspired, divinely created, and it is so perfectly done as far as math when you look at it i mean it's everywhere 
That is the universal language. It's math. And it's something that, you know, anybody who has the, um, you know, the knowledge to understand the implications of this is something you can't just turn away from. I remember uh, when I was getting into stuff, you know, back in college, when I started learning about, you know, astro- astronomy, astrology and everything like that. I mean, the stuff jumps up at you, especially when you know the Bible. So when you start uh, just learning about the uh, stars and everything like that, and you start understanding Bible stories, it starts to pop out at you. And it's one of the things that helped me, you know, as I went along, just uh, learning about astronomy and everything like that, geometry and everything like that, all the stuff that um, the ancients knew. And um you can see, I mean, everything just starts to open up. All the stories start to open up and you can see what they're talking about. So really, when you dig deep into that Bible, I mean, everything I'm talking about that we're going to get into as far as astronomy, astrology as well, you're going to see it's in the Bible. And if you go back and look, because I'm not going to really have time to really go into every single story. I'm going to give you some some of the stories. But a lot of the stories, when you go and you just look at some of the things they're talking about that don't make no sense to you. You know, like having, uh, you know, 10 heads and all that kind of stuff like that. Come on. It's talking about the heavens. It's talking about the stars. It's talking about constellations. And, uh, the more you research this stuff, uh, the more you, when you start looking at, um, the Quran and the Torah, I mean, all the stories, everything just laid down, not just in the Bible, but movies as well. You start to see in movies where they got things from. And it's, it's easy to see it, uh, the more you understand astronomy. Now, and you got a lot of people out there, mostly uh, Christians or religious people who don't really buy into the whole Fibonacci sequence and all of the, uh, you know, the math of the golden ratio and stuff like that. They think it's some kind of numbers trick. It's all, you know, some kind of game. But the thing is, numbers don't lie. You know, it's not a game when you see that daisies grow and the Fibonacci numbers, you can see, you know, the uh, the one and the two and the three and the five and the eight. And you get found it in the petals. It, they grow in that sequence. When you look at the spiral of a seashells, when you look at the spirals and you count them, you know, uh, count uh, clockwise and counterclockwise, the numbers equal a Fibonacci number. You know, these are stuff that these things that you just can't turn away from when you look at the proportion you know of our faces and uh what people consider to be like a perfect face you know fibonacci sequence we find it in our air we find it in so many different things it's just the sequence is there and it's something that you can't you just can't ignore or deny now in 1509 leonardo da vinci illustrated a book called the divine proportions now it's a book on mathematics of course now in this book it's basically talking about the shapes that basically make up the uh, reality. And it's really relative to everything. There are shapes, you know, you can just, you know, from here to here, if I go boom, boom, you know, it's a shape here, whether you want, you can call it whatever you want. It's a shape. And in that weird shape, you'll still be able to find like a square or a triangle or a rectangle or what have you. And because you can find these things, they can be calculated. Numbers, can be found. So, you know, it's everywhere. The uh, it's divine mathematics or, you know, what have you, whatever they want to call it. Now, the whole thing is when you uh, when you understand Da Vinci and uh, everything that he did, uh, we see the golden ratio. Now, remember, Da Vinci gave us uh, his version of the Vitruvian Man, which we know that uh, other people did the Vitruvian Man before Da Vinci. We know uh, Giovanni uh, Giacundo was one of the people who did a Vitruvian Man as well. Now, the Vitruvian Man is basically uh, based on Vitruvius, who was a uh, Roman um, mathematician. He was a Roman mathematician, but also a Roman architect who basically used the proportions of uh, bodies. He was obsessed with the proportions of bodies. Bodies, he used it in his building. So the Vitruvian man that Da Vinci created, we see it's basically the Fibonacci sequence. We can find the golden number in almost everything that Leonardo da Vinci did. A lot of people look at look at the Mona Lisa and they just can't understand what's the point. What is it all about? Well, the Mona Lisa contains the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. The Last Supper also contains the golden ratio. It's found 
everywhere in Da Vinci's work. And a lot of people don't understand why they don't get it. When you find paintings and you look at a painting and you say, well, damn, it's a nice painting. It's banging and all that. But you know, I like Rembrandt. But why the hell is this painting worth, you know, a million dollars? And people don't realize the math that's in the painting. And unless you can see it, unless you are on that level, this is something that the elites, you know, they love this stuff. And unless you're on that level, you understand the knowledge that's in the painting. You know, it's just a painting to you. And this is why this stuff costs money. Remember, I talked about in my video on the calculated destruction of the black man, uh, man and woman. Remember them listening to classical music because they understood that it stimulate the brain and it develops a higher brain function. It's the same thing with staring at a painting with this math. Even though you don't understand what it's doing to your brain, it is stimulating it. This is why people also get dressed up nice and they go out and, um, to art galleries and to the museum and look at paintings because they understand the visualization of this painting is stimulating something in their brain. And this is a problem that we have as black people. We don't realize what is, is, is magic, so to speak. What is power, so to speak? What can basically, uh, you know, bring us back and to us, to a lot of people, it's corny. It's boring. I don't want to go look at no goddamn painting. I'm going to go to the movies. I'm walking dead, come on tonight. Nope. I'm not going to no museum. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going nowhere. And we got to realize that, you know, having this stuff and analyzing these paintings, of course, a lot of people can't afford a million dollar painting. You know, it's, it's, it's good to have this stuff and to look at it and to understand what it is and the math that exists within it because it's power. And you're going to understand in this video, you know, what I mean by that. And, um, it's deep. I don't think. It's not too many people that's talking about this stuff, which is why, of course, you got me to put out a video. And I got this whole thing now because, um, you know, you got some haters who uh, talk about, you know, uh, Mark about just trying to make money off the uh, DVDs and this and that as if I'm like getting super rich off this stuff. No, it's because I put so much time and work, not just into making a video, even though it's just me. In front of a camera, it seems like, you know, it's a lot to put this stuff together, to give it to you. And it's a lot that I did to get this knowledge, to obtain it, to give it to you. So, you know, serious people is who I really want to affect. People who are really serious about this information, who really want the information. Um, and, you know, if it was a book, you would have to pay for it. You know, you would have to buy it and it's, it will be well worth the money. So, you know, not to, I don't mean to throw this in a, another video and talk about it again because I hate getting on this, on this subject, but I want you to, to understand you're getting your money's worth. You know, somebody, um, I was talking about this, uh, to a friend of mine, professor, as a matter of fact, uh, about what I'm going to be talking about in this video. You know, and he said the same thing. Oh, you need to be, come teach. And, uh, listen, people, I turned down offers left and right, you know, and I was just talking with somebody about that, about, um, getting with some of these guys that's on YouTube and everything like that. It's just something I can't do. And my knowledge, my information is for those who really want this information and want to, to take it to the next level. And, um, the next level is where you want to be. You know, that's what it's all about. And, um, understanding this right here in this video, when we get to the end and what you're going to get, what you're going to come away with. I mean, to me, this out of all my videos is one of the most, I can say the most important video out of all of them. And, uh, I really think it is. And I think you will understand why, you know, by the end of this DVD, but let me get back into it. So now, yes, Da Vinci, they put everything. He put everything in there. He talked about the, uh, golden ratio in there and he put, um, Fibonacci sequence in his uh, work. And as I was saying, you know, this stuff is important for us to learn. This is why paintings by Rembrandt and, you know, works by Da Vinci and, um, music and everything. Music is math. Understand that. And, uh, all this stuff is important because it stimulates the brain when you can look at this stuff. When you look at the Last Supper and you don't realize that something is registering your brain as far as the golden ratio. And, you know, because it's you. And, you're going to understand by the end of this video what I mean by that. So, you know, let's keep going. So now when the uh, Greeks, when they start getting this information, of course, 
They copied the Egyptians. They came up with the uh, mystery schools and everything like that. And they start initiating people into, you know, their knowledge. Their, not their knowledge, their stolen knowledge, their way of thinking or what have you. Teaching the so-called elite. And we know that Pythagoras studied with the Egyptians. He had to be cool with them. He's an Ionian. Remember, I talked about the Ionians and their relationship with the uh, ancient uh, Egyptians or what have you. They had a really good relationship. So. We know Pythagoras studied with them. Tallies studied with the Egyptians. So they got this knowledge. Now you have Tallies and Pythagoras who are basically, you know, known as the godfathers of mathematics or what have you. So, you know, they were really able to look at everything and draw out the math that's in it. So basically what they did was they basically took uh, whatever the ancient Egyptians were calling numbers, uh, whatever number system they had, and they created their own, of course. You know, because everything is mathematics, you know, the universe, everything. They understood that it all equals, you know, uh, to math. You know, it's everywhere. It's infinity. Math is all over the place. If the universe is infinity, math is infinity. So, you know, an example of this is pi. Now, when you take the decimal value of pi, you know, it goes on forever. It doesn't stop. I mean, the sequence of numbers is basically infinite, which is why people say, you know, pi equals infinity minus infinity. So, you know, it's infinity. So it's, it's something that is really hard to, to get your mind around when you look out and everything is basically equations. Because it's relative to something, meaning that it is math there. Math exists. Geometry exists. It's there within this space right now. The space between me and the camera exists mathematics. It's everywhere. So, so now when you look at that, you understand why, you know, in the matrix, they looked at it in code. You understand why uh, when Neo became the one, he seen everything in code. He saw the code. The whole world was in its digital uh, format as he was talking about in the video about the ones and zeros you know uh the whole binary code system that's basically what it is the basis for the for your computer for the program and everything goes all the way down to binary code that can basically be uh translated into what have you pictures or words or whatever so you know this is the basis of all this stuff and this is basically the basis for our universe you know it's it's weird you know when you really pay attention to it and it's something that a lot of people just can't get their head around that it's math that you know everything is math so you know when you think about that you know here's the thing that make you scratch your head here's the mind-boggling thing so we give people like pythagoras and tallies and um you know einstein and others all this credit about math astrology or what have you so we give them the credit for mathematics okay he created math or he created geometry no one created math. No one created geometry. They simply discovered it. It already exists long before we were here. I mean, just think about that. Math existed before math was created. I mean, how, how do you, how do you do that? You know, so whatever the ancient Egyptian counting system was, as I said, they basically took it. And they changed the symbols and the names of it, you know, but the principles remain the same. So, you know, one plus one is two, you know, uno plus uno equals dos, you know, theater plus femme equals neo. And uh, it doesn't matter what language you put it in, you know, these numbers are going to equal the same in whatever language. That's not the, the part. The principle is what, you know, what really matters. As long as the principle remains the same, that one plus one equals two, the language doesn't really matter. So, you know, there is no such thing as math, really. It's the universe. It's everything. So, and this is what a lot of people look at and, you know, it becomes, it's much deeper than this. It becomes really uh, mind boggling when you sit back and think about it. Like, damn, nobody invented math. Math was already here. So to put that in perspective, you know, before people existed, if, uh, you know, this was a floating asteroid and this was a floating asteroid, we, it would still be two. It's still two. That's still numbers. It exists. You understand what I'm saying? So before anything came, you know, math was already here. It existed because it was relative to each other or relative 
to space. And because it was, it, it exists, math exists. And it's, it's mind boggling. It's crazy to try to wrap your head around it. But this is, is the key. It's, it's a huge part to uh, what's going on. So now, how do you begin to measure um, the universe or things in the universe? How do you begin to measure reality? I mean, it's something that's mind boggling when you think about it. But we know that the civilization before the dynasties, uh, the Egyptians that existed, that the um, Egyptians speak about, the ones who really built the pyramids, we know they had to figure this stuff out. When everybody, before everybody came up and even looked at the stars to even wonder, you know, what was going on, those pyramids was there. You know, the Sphinx was there. Heru and Akhet was there. It was already there while people was under the ground. So when they came up and seen these structures, they had no clue. But the Egyptians and the dynasties had some understanding. The whole thing is, you know, what exactly were they trying to accomplish now while the principles of math could be put to the use of building buildings, you know, making structures. It's another spiritual use to this, to these numbers, to this system that the Egyptians was trying to um, really dig into. And that's what I'm going to touch on in a little bit. But, you know, you look at the fact that they proved that they had this knowledge in building the uh, Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid contains, uh, you know, phi, the whole golden ratio. When you look at the uh, pyramids on, on the Giza Strip, they basically, uh, you can find them in the Fibonacci uh, spiral. So, I mean, the speed of light we can measure in the uh, circumference, in the base of the Great Pyramid. I mean, everything. They put basically heaven on earth when they created the Great Pyramids in Giza. And that's that's basically what it's all about. So when you go back and you look at the pyramid uh, in Mexico, uh, Quetzalcoatl, and you see that they built this pyramid. And what happens is every um, 11 and a half years when the, when the sun, because of the rotation of the sun, when the sunspot start right at that peak at the little, you know, at the top of the pyramid, it appears right through that little opening there. So you got to understand the kind of brain that it would take to understand. I need to build this pyramid to this exact height, these exact specifications in order for this thing that happens every 11 and a half years to occur and appear right through this opening. I mean, how do you calculate something like that? You got to think about it. Even if you were to to have the brain to plan the uh, building of the Great Pyramid. I mean, that's one thing to have that great mind, but to actually accomplish it and build it is basically impossible when you understand the math that's behind it that, you know, we basically really can't understand. It's perfection. And they did it. So we know, as I said before, in uh, Saturn and Satan series, that civilization, whatever they were, they were powerful. You know, the dynasties call them the gods. And a lot of um, people talk about the civilizations before that time were the gods. And it's a lot of things that allude to that. We don't really know for sure what they really mean by that. But the simple fact that they can build that pyramid, that they did that, that even when you look at, you know, uh, down in uh, Mexico, I mean, it's amazing that they had that knowledge. So all of this is stuff that we have been basically, you know, taught to ignore and not to really dig into. As I said, people look to the Bible, to religion for mystery and wonder and awe to be inspired when it's right in front of your face in Kemet and in Mexico and many other places around the world. Now, we also have the Temple of Man at Karnak. Now, it's basically built. The foundation of this temple is basically the uh, golden ratio. So when you look at it, you basically have like the ratio of a large man laying on the golden uh, uh, ratio. And that's basically what it, what it is, what it looks like. You, you probably recognize it because Rome stole it. And when they created the whole Vatican and the whole Vatican Square, this is, you know, you can see clearly that Rome stole it. It's where they got it from, from Kemet, just like they stole everything else from Kemet. So now... Um, Again, we see the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians that they had this knowledge. The golden ratio is replete within the temple of Karnak. And 
A lot of people believe that it's designed to represent Pi and to go on, uh, to just keep going. Because you have in a lot of cases, uh, different dynasties adding to that temple. And a lot of people think it was built to represent, you know, that number, the basically in the infinite. And who knows how long they would have kept building or if they would have kept building on it, you know, for as far as it can stretch. Who knows? We know what's there is amazing. The uh, the pillars is amazing. The height of it and all of it. You find math, you find mathematics, you find the, uh, the golden ratio. And you know, it's amazing. You know, so again, when we go and we look at uh, Mexico and the whole pyramid, the Quintuquado, and we look at the Great uh, Pyramid and we look at the fact that they understood this math. And, you know, the thing is, we think about it as, you know, math. When we think about math, we think about somebody teaching us math. We don't think of math as being just, you know, normal. But we got to understand, you know, they wasn't taught math. I mean, these people, whoever these ancients was, they was in tune with the universe. And it wasn't math to them. It was just normal. It was something that was already known. This is why it's so mind boggling the fact that they understood this. Because, you know, basically we are math. We are that, that we are the numbers. And when you get down to, you know, the nitty gritty of it, binary code, I mean, it's us. We are the mathematics. So and it's tough to put that into perspective for some people because it's just something that's hard to wrap your head around. But you got to realize the ancients embodied this. I mean, they had this knowledge. It was just like, you know, second nature to them. And the whole thing is, it's like, you know, when a baby is born, how does it know how to feed? You know, a baby comes out, it knows how to feed, it knows how to, to suckle, it knows that it needs this nourishment to survive. The most craziest thing is a baby kangaroo. You know, when a baby kangaroo, when it comes out, it climbs up its mother, you know, climbs through all the fur into the pouch where, where the nipple is so it can feed. You know, how does it know to do that? How does a kangaroo, how does it just came out seconds later, it's climbing up to get into the pouch. So it can survive, you know, how does it know that? So we got to really rethink our thinking sometimes and, you know, not go into the realm of super spooky all the time, but to understand what's possible and what has been proven and um, what we can see. I mean, clearly these people had a knowledge of math that is not the same as us using a calculator or, you know, punching in some numbers or writing on a piece of paper. There's something that was normal that they just knew that, you know, nature perfect is perfection. So, you know, it is what it is. It, it, it exists. So no matter what you say, no matter what, one plus one equals two, we're operating on that number. That's perfection. One plus one is two. If I do if I have to do something on one plus one equals two and I come out one plus one equals two, it's perfection. So do you get what I'm saying as far as numbers? When they're working on this precise scale of numbers, everything they did, as long as they stuck to the principles of, you know, the equation of the numbers, what it what it equal to, what it's supposed to be, you know, it's it's perfection. And that's what we see when we look at a lot of this stuff. And to them, it was second nature. It wasn't even an afterthought, you know, and um, it's mind boggling when you really get into all of it and you start to think like, you know, the implications uh, of what it means. So now understand everything is sacred math, sacred science. It is the language of the universe. Either you speak it or you don't. It is how you basically talk to God, how you basically, you know, Put it out to the universe and get the universe to understand what you are doing. So now the elite, when you pay attention to what they have done, when you look at everything, the symbolism of all that they have and do, you will find these golden numbers. You will find the Fibonacci sequence. You will find a golden ratio. You will find astrology. You will find astronomy. You will find everything. All of this stuff is replete in every single thing that they do because it is the universal language. It's just that simple. And they know how to use it, which is why they are winning. But there are rules. <laughs> As this video is titled to, just like there are rules and laws in mathematics, right? There are rules. So 
If one plus one equals two, you cannot force it to be three. You are setting nature out of whack. And what do I mean by that? I mean, even if you teach a person, teach a child that one plus one is three, you know, if you set it up somehow that one plus one is three and you put it in their head, everything that they do after that is wrong. Everything is wrong. And of course, somebody would come along and correct that. But understand what I'm trying to say. You know, everything that they did, if they had to go into a room and do math after you taught them that one plus one is three, it's wrong. It throws everything out of whack. And so staying on, staying in tune with what's right is basically what they are doing. They understand the mathematics of it. They understand the universal language and how to stay in tune with it. And they're doing so with the numbers uh, as above. So below, we always hear about that. We always talk about that. So they are able, they know how to harness this energy because this is what the ancient Egyptians was trying to figure out. See, the whole thing is, you know, it's numbers, it's math. So what, you know, we can build with it. It's more to it than that. It's power in it. So how do you, how do we get the power out of it? What, what is the power in it? And understanding these laws and uh, understanding how how this stuff works. And the ancient Egyptians was on their way, I believe, to figuring it out. If you understand that there is an equation to magnetism, an equation to, you know, electromagnetism, and you understand how to create this equation, what this equation consists of, then you can effectively, you know, create electromagnetism, you know, in theory. So let's just say, you know, seven plus seven equals fire. Now those 14 digits will basically correspond to a component. And you know, if you put these uh, components together, you get fire, you know, just understand on that level. This is what we're talking about. All this stuff exists within our reality and it's all comprised and all consists of math, mathematics. And if you understand the math to it, then you can control it. And it's basically tied to a universal energy. You know, and they have figured out how to basically harness it. It gets a little bit deeper than this because where my research is now, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit because a lot of people ask me questions. You know, where are you at in your research? This and that. I've been looking, at, and it's going to sound <laughs> funny as hell, but looking at time travel. Uh, was where I'm, it's like a side project where I'm, that I'm dealing with right now because um, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to um, really when you get into it, it's a lot to prove that it is possible. It could be possible. And I, I know that sounds crazy. It sounds loopy. But let me tell you something. You know, the traveling part is something that I don't think we can do uh, in our uh, material state. It's something that possibly can be done, you know, in an energetic state. Materialistically, I don't think we can travel. But I think it's possible to see, you know, I know it is. I know they can do it. I think they can see into the future. They know, you know, what what's connect, what's going to happen and what they're trying to do as far as what I can see is, you know, um, probability. Now, anybody who studies uh Quantum physics knows about the probability wave and know about prob probability. It exists in math as well. So what I really believe what they're doing is looking somehow, some way into the future and understanding that um, in order for them to get the future that they want to, to get, to create, they have to do certain things. Now, the whole thing is if you if you do the wrong thing, then, of course, you won't get the feature that you that you want you know you can't do certain things because of course there's rules and if you want this feature then you have to um you know uh do things differently so let's just say they want to take over they want to rule if they could see the feature and they know if they do this the people will rebel they will lose you know it'll be over and uh in hindsight you know it would be too late we would win. We would know everything. We would know what this stuff is all about and what they did. And there they will be defeated. 
That's something that they cannot risk. So a lot of people ask the question, why do you think um, they just don't simply take over because there are rules and they have to abide by them. Now, the reason why, you know, I dove into the whole time travel thing and started looking into it, um, not so much time travel, but the ability to look into the future. Now, this is something that, you know, fortune tellers, psychics and everybody, you know, claim to have the power to to do. And it's something that we can't ignore in a lot of cases because we kind of see proof. Whatever that force or power is, it exists. And that's something I always believed in. But if you had such a power, I mean, to me, it explains a lot. The reason why I really started digging into it is because I know for a fact you cannot rig a basketball game. It just can't be done. I mean, you can't calculate the fact that a person will make every single shot. It's something that you just can't do. I'm sorry. Now, you could pay off some refs or have some refs in your pocket to make calls go your way. That's one thing. But you can't rely on players to make shots. You know, if you tell them, hey, I need you guys to, to win this game. I mean, the only way that you can guarantee victory is if, you know, the person on the other team is not making the shots that he just purposely misses a lot of shots, have a bad game. But you think you can't you can't really calculate the rest of the team missing. So a lot of people say, well, you know, the NBA looks rigged. NFL is rigged. You know, uh, it's tough to do that. Now, what it. What, when it seems like they're rigging it, what I believe it really is, is the fact that they already know who is what and who's going to win. The simple fact, that whole uh, Ravens Super Bowl, when the Ravens won against the uh, 49ers, I think it was, that right there was like, what? Because one, okay, yeah, we saw in the Batman movie about the Ravens football, and um, that kind of uh, didn't... Uh, Put out too much, but the commercials that correspond to what that was giving us a lot of hints. And you know, Beyonce sung at that Super Bowl when the lights went out and everything. It was just like weird, like you know, what's up with that? And it wasn't really nothing from that. It was like okay, everybody looked at it as an accident. But it was so much when I went back and looked at this information, uh, start looking into it. It's, it's like you know, they basically knew, they understood, you know, what what was going on, what's what's going to happen. So I honestly think it's not the fact that they're rigging. These sports uh, games, I think they know already who's going to win. And I think they knew they know certain people is going to be stars, which is why they can offer them, you know, crazy contracts before, you know, they even spend a couple years in the NBA. I mean, you have to really think a company like Nike, smart company, genius CEO to give a player, you know, 90 million dollars. Before they even play basketball. I mean, why, why do you do something like that? I mean, think about that. He can get hurt, career injured, first game of the season. You gave him, you know, all that money already. It's a done deal. Same thing with Iverson. They gave Iverson a, basically a lifetime supply of Reeboks, you know, forever. As long as you wear Nikes forever, I think he got like 55 million or something like that, 60, 80 million, something like that to basically wear Reeboks for life. I mean, how do you get somebody a contract like that when you don't know, you know, so early in their life? So I honestly believe that um, they know what's going to happen and what they're trying to do is calculate it so that it fits to the outcome that they want. Now, I know that may sound crazy, but that's where I'm at with my research. I'm, I'm, I'm on other stuff, too, but I kind of segued into this uh, because of just some stuff I've been seeing that allows me. Um, to believe this. And um, of course, you know, you think about the whole psychic thing and do they have psychics working for them? You know, it, it kind of messes with you because then you, you kind of play with it and say, well, wait a minute, are these psychics real? You know, do they really know? And uh, if they do know, then um, I mean, it should be easy for them to do what they want to do. But then, of course, you know, I understand personally about the rules. Now, when I say to you that This government, the powers that be, everything that they are doing is legit. You have to really understand we have a constitution that everybody in this country abides by and is under. Why? Why Why are we under this constitution? Why? For what? Why do we need it? 
when we all understand, don't steal my shit. I won't steal your shit. Don't hurt me. I won't hurt you. Don't renege on the contract. I won't renege on the contract. These are basic laws, you know, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Basic shit. That's all we need. Anything else is null and void unless you are a company or a corporation, of course. Then you have to have these little uh, extra stipulations, which is why we say, you know, they it's the straw man shit. We, they made us into corporations so they can control us and control everything. Clear as day, that's exactly what happened and what they did. What you have to realize is the universe don't give a damn that you don't understand this. It don't care that you getting screwed, basically cheated. They put forth this constitution, even though we know we don't really want to abide by it. We don't want to be under it. We are under it and we are staying under it willfully. So if I draw up a contract that says, even though you are blind, I'm going to give you $3 million. Now, I'm going to take $300,000 away from you every six months. And you understand this. And I say it to you and you agree to, to it and you sign the contract. Who's the fool? You or the government? Now, the universe, unfortunately, doesn't care if you are blind, if you are deaf, if you are too stupid to understand what's going on. The whole thing is when you are given something as such, like a constitution, you know, or, you know, a contract to sign, what you are supposed to do is to read it, is to understand it, you know, to know what it is. You know, if you don't, you agreeing to it, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It's, it's, it's off. It's wrong. It's one plus one equals three. What is wrong with you that you wouldn't look at a constitution, at a contract, something that you are heavily involved in and not understand what it is that's trying to do, you know, calculus and you have no clue. You're trying to find a value for E and X and algebra or, you know, you have absolutely no clue where to start. Why would you even begin to try? You get what I'm saying? And this is what we have done. This is what we have fell into. Now, we understand this shit is all a trap. Now, a lot of people have no clue. You know, we can't operate on this is the way it is. And this is like, you know, what I was born into. You have to understand what's going on. And if you don't, and if you choose to just go with the flow and follow what everybody else is doing, then it's your fault. It's not their fault. What they did is legal. It's fine. It's no problem but yours. And they are the beneficiary of our problems. And because we have not looked into what they're doing, you know, clearly we are falling victim to it. So, you know, their whole disguise is you know, what began to happen back in the day is people started to, of course, figure out that the religion is bogus and everything is basically being ran by the church and they are growing and growing in power. So what do you do? I mean, even when you have when you go back to the time of the Romans and the Caesar was getting out of control, you know, they silenced the people. With fun. We're going to give you fights. We're going to give you uh, tournaments and games and stuff like that to occupy your time to get you to focus on stuff other than what we are doing. And whose fault is that? It's ours. So you got to understand the universe doesn't care. It's your fault. You are doing stuff that's outside of what's supposed to be. So you are basically not doing what you're supposed to do when, uh, as it relates to reality. So since we are doing stuff outside of the nature of reality, then it is not in tune. It's off. It's wrong. We are operating in a, a, a different frequency, not in the, the, the realm of right. I don't know if you, I, I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. What you are doing, the way you are living your life is completely out of sync. It is not right. It is not correct. You are not you. You are being controlled and led by people willingly. And it's not in tune with the universe. They are doing all of this misleading while being in tune with the universe, by being uh, using the symbols as if they are being backed by the universe. You get what I'm saying? It's almost like 
to put it in a different perspective, they turned Jesus against you. Just to put it in another perspective. Imagine if the bad guy had control of Jesus and it was manipulating Jesus to, to basically help them out and Jesus to look at you as, you know, a sinner. It's nothing. You're doing all the wrong shit. You get what you deserve. You're going to go to hell. This is basically what they're doing. So since they understand the laws and I can't really get uh, in too deep. Uh, with the laws, because I'm going to really touch on this and go in deeper in the Saturn Satan series. I just want to touch on a little bit here, but we're going to get into it much deeper in that series because, you know, these laws, the little bit that I'm going to talk about in this video, you'll see is going to branch over in that series. But these are the laws, basically, when you understand it's more to it, which we'll get into later, as I said. But you got to understand down to his basic principle, we have right and wrong. This is a human thing right and wrong and um what's right and what's wrong what's right to you might be wrong to me and vice versa what really matters is um <clears throat> excuse me what the universe thinks and if the universe can't add it up mathematically then it's off it's not in tune so the reason why we went through all this stuff as far as mathematics and everything in the universe and how everything works, there is a divine proportion, so to speak, to things, to reality. And believe it or not, your actions is calculated in this whole thing. It's so deep to get into. It's just so much to explain that it's tough. So basically, the energy that you are dedicating to certain things Ascribe that to mathematics as well. So you're diverting energy to feeding a system that you don't control. That's out of tune with the universe. You're diverting your energy to not helping yourself develop as an energy. That's out of tune with the universe. You don't even understand math. Out of tune with the universe. You can't even speak to it. So, you know. There are things that you must understand, which I'm going to get into all this stuff as we go along and things you must surround yourself with. So I told people, surround your stuff. This is perfect geometry right here. Surround your stuff with. I surround my stuff with, if you look around in here, I have Kemet stuff everywhere. I have the Fibonacci sequence. I have pi. I have the golden ratio. Even though it's on your credit card, you have it in your pocket, but it's not for you. The energy going somewhere else, but I have all this stuff, uh, here and create stuff so people who paint who make art a lot of them a lot of them probably do not realize that they're doing so you know following the fibonacci sequence or within the golden ratio and the reason why that they are successful and talented is because they are following this ratio because it's built into them they are in tune with it so of course understand you know everything that we have been taught the way they teach us in school is so that we don't understand this math. And when you look at the average person, we would rather, most of us would rather take English than math. A lot of people have trouble with math. You got some people who are math geniuses. They are more uh, uh, in tune with everything. And some people who just can't stand math. They don't like it. They don't really understand it. They don't want to deal with it. And it's like, why is that? You know, why is it? Why haven't we been given the tools to really understand math when you really get down to it? It's not that hard. You know, it's, it's numbers. You know, it's, it's ratios, calculations. How hard is it to teach that thing? You know, and we look at it, especially in the black community. We've been we've been taught stuff. I mean, you get in basic math and you get into algebra, they just go right into it. Nobody really breaks down what this stuff is for, what it's about. You just get in school and they start teaching it to you. But then you look at other schools and you find out the kids been learning about binary code. You know how Zuckerberg and uh, uh, even Bill Gates, how they understood to even make these programs. They had classes when they was young teaching them about binary code, teaching them how, how to program. We didn't get this kind of stuff. So we ain't nowhere near the level of a lot of these kids. So basically what you have, not to even put it with the whole race thing, is you had, they made sure the powers that be to give, you know, uh, white people the good math, the math that will help them move along into the, um, you know, the mystery teachings, so to speak, even though they didn't know what it really is. 
we wasn't given that in the hood. So you had what happened was geniuses popping up everywhere. You know, the Albert Einsteins and, um, you know, all of your Greek uh, philosophers or what have you who was taught uh, in the mystery school. So you had this knowledge being passed down and it was taught and you had a lot of people come up knowing, you know, amazing math. And to me, it boggles my mind sometimes when, you know, I remember when I was growing up and I was seeing people who just knew math really well. You know, and I would see people on TV, like on Channel 12, watching uh, uh, Nova or something like that. I would see people who just knew some amazing stuff. And I was like, you know, what school did you people go to? Like, you know, where did you go to learn this stuff? Especially when you see kids, teenagers know this stuff. It's like, well, they don't, they don't teach us this stuff. How do, how do you know it? So, you know, you start to understand that, you know, something is up. And we're not being taught everything that we should be taught. So when you pay attention to all of it and you start to understand that this math is energy. You know, it is energy. As I said, everything is energy. It all goes back to that. It's energy that they're using to manipulate our reality. And it's something that, you know, the more you look at it, uh, the more it's obviously clear, you know, what's going on. Math is, is everything is everywhere as we just got into. And um, the law, the laws that we are under, you know, everything. They manipulate, they control. We are basically uh, victims of it. And even though if, if we just sit back for a second and look at stuff, we would see the problems. We would see that we've been played against each other, that there is an elite group running everything. Everybody see the information is in front of everybody. The writing is on the wall. People don't want to accept it. And um, this is what they have been able to do understanding this power and using this energy against us to manipulate our mind. You know, that's all it is. Stimulation. So when Morpheus and the Matrix was talking about, you know, what is it? You know, what is smell, taste, touch and everything like that? It's electrical signals interpreted by the brain. So if you understand that this is energy, and if you know how to manipulate the energy to affect the brain, we're talking about energy, manipulating the brain, manipulating the way you think. That's still energy. So not so much to manipulate the way you taste or the way something feels, but the way you perceive, which is even more important. And that's what's going on. They understand how to manipulate perception. And this is what they're using this power to do, to manipulate our perception to control or shape the future. And this is what it's, what it's hitting towards. Our actions, what we do as a people, when you look at everything here in America, it's been set up based upon our actions. So we look at all the shootings, Trayvon Martin and, uh, you know, Mike Brown and everybody that, that's been shot. We reacted a certain way. People march, they rioted, they uh, destroyed stuff, you know, racism increased. They controlled that. It was them. That was their doing. They manipulated the whole situation so that we react a certain way, that we put out a certain energy for whatever reason. Now, in order for them to get the results that they want, the feature result that they want, we must continue to act out the energy that they putting out for us to uh, to absorb. And this is what's going on. The whole Donald Trump thing. If you need the people to riot for whatever reason, if you need a reason to do something, you can manipulate the people and make it happen. You can cause the death of one person to have everything shut down so that you can do something else. You know, this is what's been going on. When Michael Jackson died, you know, remember, everybody's concentrating on the funeral, you know, Michael Jackson funeral, not realizing that the elites was meeting with the Pope to basically uh, discuss whatever. A lot of stuff was going on. A lot of stuff happens when something huge happened and our attention is diverted to one thing. We look and we see the elite doing something else. This is the, manip the manipulation of perception. And this is what they're doing and have been doing. Uh, to us for years. So also when we look at the um, so-called Illuminati sacrifices, 
we always find numerology, uh, dates, times, places, and stuff, uh, things like that. You know, 25 with Michael Jackson, Aliyah, Tupac, find the number 25. You find the number, uh, 39 with like, uh, Dr. King and, um, you know, people like Elvis Presley and, uh, Anna Nicole, Patrick Swayze. Uh, you find numbers that has to deal with, um, a lot of people's stuff, you know, they say the celebrities die in three threes, you know, what 25, you find that number a lot, you know, two and five is seven, the seven, 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 the whole Alistair Crawley, uh, Crawley teaching. Um, and we know, uh, seven, seven, seven was on the arm of Michael Jackson, uh, the big statue that he, uh, built. We find numerology in, in all of the celebrity sacrifices somehow some way, shape, or form. If you go and you look at it and you calculate it, it's math somewhere that means something. And we see that a lot because, you know, everything they do is math. They are operating on this whole, um, this language. They understand the universal language because really it's no death. What they doing, uh, it's almost right that they can do it if they do it uh, a certain way, a certain time. You know, when we kill people, murder is murder. It's a done deal. For some reason, they do, they kill according to ritual. And it's always a ritual based killing whenever we, the so called Illuminati kill. We always see that. It's a reason behind this stuff. And definitely going to get into this later so you really understand and get it. I will refer back to this video. But, um, we see it. All the time, you know, ritual based sacrifices. We see things that they do that involves ritual, the whole Bohemian Grove, the whole cremation and care ceremony and all that kind of stuff. You know, things that when we, we look at them and it just it seems crazy and we don't understand that it's done to put out a certain kind of energy to influence a certain frequency to basically control something. And. This is why a lot of stuff is done. A lot of it involves uh, sex because it's like one of the strongest energy. Just you can put energy, excuse me, you can put out. Uh, it's doing sex, you know, the whole mating ritual and it's symbolism behind that as well. So, you know, we find this stuff everywhere. It's math. It's symbology. And uh, it's the language of the universe that they understand and that they are using against us and we must understand it so it's not easy for people to just you know digest geometry and trig and calculus and everything like that because a lot of people don't understand why you need it and that was the big deal right there we always say well what the hell is this stuff is about why would i ever need this stuff why would i ever i'm not ever going to use this stuff we always say that when it uh pertains to math and now you understand why and what it really means and what it's all about and if you can calculate certain things how you can understand probability and uh you know what could happen so i mean just think about that if you can bypass probability and understand what the future is going to be based upon whatever actions actions that you influence and control i mean they they basically playing god and what they call itself in the bible i mean it's so much that they are able to do because they can influence our reality and determine what is going to happen in the future or steer it in their direction now we wake up sometimes and we spoil shit um and it, it, it makes me question, you know, can they really see into the future or do they understand, um, you know, what's going on or where where things is really headed? Because it's like some of the moves they make, you ask yourself, you know, why? You know, why did they go this route? Why did they do this? And, um, yeah, you don't you don't know if it's part of a plan or if it's a. Uh, something that we spoil because of our actions so i would like to think it's something that we spoil because of our actions which is why i put out so much information so people can understand and be alert now to segue into this whole uh donald trump thing that's when i get into it real fast because um people you need to understand um one th one of the things with donald trump him being president and you know, they controlling him. They got their man in the White House. You need to understand that um, based upon the things that we see, we have seen so far with the riots and the people 
white people pissed off right now. It's not so much that they can do now. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's not so much that they can do as far as deceiving the people or going the wrong way. Unless they want to cause a panic or cause riots in the street or cause martial law. And the reason why I'm saying this is because hopefully, you know, most of you probably smart enough to understand not to follow none of this stuff and not to really dig into it. Everything that's going to happen that's going to pertain to Donald Trump is for a reason. What that reason is right now is hard to see. But what I what I do see is, you know, you see a lot of countries, leaders and presidents coming up, you know, talking against Donald Trump, you know, saying bad things about Trump. So right now, what we're looking at, you know, when you look at it, if Donald Trump does something wrong, it's a reason for a lot of countries to uh, come after him. Now, I'm not saying necessarily people are going to attack America. They won't be that. They won't be that stupid. But of course, the powers that be can fake an attack and make it seem like you know we're going to war with somebody or something like that, or what have you. Like you need to be prepared for such and understand that. Um, yeah. Something could possibly happen with this dude. Do I think something is going to happen? Honestly, um, who knows? It's tough to tell right now. It's going to be easier to tell, you know, come like March. You know, once he's in the White House and we see everybody who he's appointing, you know, it's, it's going to be easier to see a little bit what direction they might be going into. Right now, it's up in the air. Right now, I've just been paying attention to... um what what uh other countries is saying and paying attention to you know the you know trying to fill it out the energy of it but you know what i was saying you know they're they're staring the energy in a certain direction right now and some people you know i was talking to a friend of mine we were just saying this you know about the energy you know everything is on chill right now thanksgiving just passed you got black friday christmas coming up that's how it usually go they chill the fuck out, let us spend all our money and enjoy the holidays. New Year's roll around and, you know, next thing we know, some shit happening. Shooting happening, mass killing, what have you. And it's going to be the same, you know, something that jump up. I wouldn't be surprised if something go down at the whole inauguration with Trump, you know. Who knows? So it's just stuff to keep your eye on and understand, you know, that these people are manipulating the whole thing. They're manipulating the energy. They're controlling it as it pertains to us and our actions. And they're going to use our actions to execute, you know, a plan that's in their agenda. And that's just, you know, just the case. Now, digging deeper into the whole math thing again. Uh, it's just a lot that it connects with. That's that's tough to explain right now, but I'm gonna be able to get into it and explain it later without giving away a lot. You know, uh, after the um, Saturn and Satan series, and while when we get into the Metronature a little bit more, uh, you can be able to see this more clear. Because if I just come out with it now, it's not gonna really make sense, and you you understand how you know what I mean by that. You know, I put out a lot of stuff to where I connected the, the dots later. Excuse me. And I'm going to do so with this, but I want I wanted to leave you guys and give you this information as a premise so that you can understand um, that there is rules that we are not following, that they are. And it may seem like they are the bad guys and they're not following the rules, but they are the ones who are doing stuff legally. All these countries, think about it. Why does all these countries follow this system? Follow the system. You go to other countries, they got social security numbers, birth certificates, and everything like that. They're following this system. And you got to understand what that is, understand the energy behind it. And um, it's them. It's all the same. You know, remember, they got mostly, almost all the countries underneath their whole umbrella of this whole new world order, except for a few. And with Castro being dead and Cuba, we don't know what uh, what's going to happen with Cuba. Castro, um, yeah, I don't agree with everything that he did, but Castro is one of the few that beat these people, man. And he might have died normally, and I'm not saying that he was killed and everything like that. I think um, he, he died, you know, naturally. But this dude was able to 
keep them out of Cuba and from touching Cuba. And Cuba has a very good medical facility. They, they really good with medicine. They cured a lot of diseases that we don't even know about over here. And, um, it's a lot of stuff that's good in Cuba that we don't realize. The, the country is poor. You know, they have, you know, a lot of sanctions against, against them and, you know, a lot of stuff that they can't get because they didn't bow down to, you know, this whole military industrial complex and this, this, these powers that be. So they had sanctions against them. But of course, they was able to use their country and the resources there to still flourish, you know, within themselves. So it's not so many people that's, yeah, I don't think nobody's trading with Cuba, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, really right now. I suffer like, you know, the whole cigar trade and uh, some things that come out of there. Yeah, of course. But um, not in the way that uh, other countries are trading. So and that's because they basically not dealing with this whole U.N. crap. They can see through it. It's the same thing like with Iran, who's not really trying to deal with this whole U.N. stuff and other countries who wasn't trying to deal with the U.N. And um, people can see that the UN, UN is it's a scam. It's basically an umbrella that's trying to collect these uh, countries up under it. So the UN is trying to collect, you know, these countries and put it up under its umbrella, you know, of this whole new world order regime or what have you. So, yeah, it's a lot of countries that's not down with that. And uh, Castro was one of the few who have for, you know, decades been able to basically defeat them and keep them away. And it's messed up that, you know, a lot of people don't understand what he really did and what that really means for him to be this. A lot of people look to him as, you know, a revolutionary, uh, a person who really uh, he stood his ground. I mean, his story is amazing. When you get into it, when you got time, look at it. It's amazing what this dude did and everything he went through to basically try to, you know, save the country for the Cuban people. And it's messed up. A lot of people bad talking to them as Cubans that fled from there for whatever reason, but don't realize uh, what really happened. So hopefully everybody, you know, be vigilant, pay attention to what's going on. I tell people if you can, you know, um, get your passport together, save some money in case you need to leave the country. I don't think it's going to get that bad no time soon. It's some things that have to uh, take place that Trump must uh, do in his beginning presidency. We know that... Um, he he's a money dude. He's a business guy, and the people that's backing them, they, they want money. So either they want a war, they're gonna try to figure out some kind of way to get this money, and that's what they all about. There's a lot of people that gotta get you know get fed, and um, usually when you, when you look at a president when he first comes in, see some kind of tax change or something that happens that's gonna uh, mess with the economy. But it's weird right now that the dollar's going up, so. You know, just got to pay attention to it. A lot of people think that Trump is going to do some good things as far as the economy because of his business background. But, you know, we don't know. You know, I really can't tell right now. I'm, I'm going to be able to really tell, like, by March and see the people he put in place and the things that they do. And you could kind of calculate, you know, what's what's probably going to come. But I try to look at things like uh, movie releases in the future. Uh you know, business moves, things of that nature to see what could possibly be coming. So we know a lot of movies are scheduled to come out next year and then uh, a lot of movies in 2018 and uh, a lot of business moves have been made. A lot of new things have been built. So when you look at stuff like that, I mean, it, it leads you to believe that, OK, well, maybe they're not going to try to spring any martial law or anything crazy now, because a lot of people who are a part of this whole thing have a lot of money invested and in, uh, a lot of ventures coming up in the future. So when you look at things like that and you look ahead, you can see, well, uh, for the next couple of years, everything looks straight. I don't see nothing too crazy as far as like martial law or anything happening. We might have some some changes somewhere somehow. But as far as I can see, you know, everything looks cool. Now, when we start seeing stuff, like I said, people messing with the banks and messing with the money and stuff like that. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. We know the ultimate goal is to crash that dollar. But um it seem, it almost seems like they backtracking from that, but I don't think they are. I think that's just the um, you know, calm before the storm, maybe. But the dollar has been strengthening, and I know because you know I've been buying up uh, crowns, uh, Swedish crowns, for a while now because I'm preparing to go back at the school and everything. So I've been buying up a lot of crowns before. You get about six hundred crowns for every hundred dollars. Now it's nine hundred crowns 
for every hundred dollars. So um the dollar is definitely getting stronger and um yeah. As um you know, we'll see what's gonna happen. But you know, this video, very important video. I'm glad you guys got in this information. It's a lot more stuff that's gonna come. Some videos we're gonna put on uh YouTube that's gonna be pertaining to this math and this geometry, and you're gonna start to see some of the things I'm talking about. But um I wanted you guys to really understand like the religion part of it, you know, where this stuff is coming from, you know. All of it's astrology, it's astronomy, it's from everywhere. I want you guys to really understand how important math is and it's everywhere. It's in everything that we do. Calculations are all over the place. And it's a lot of stuff that we are not aware of that we need to be. We got to understand the manipulation of energy that's causing us to do things that we normally wouldn't do. And this is what's going on. This is what we're going to see a lot. And we got to understand that they're controlling everything. Of course, don't believe the media. Don't pay attention to them. That's the problem. Everybody's paying attention to the media. We be on chill. Everybody be chilling, enjoying themselves. Next thing we know, it's a big story about something that got to do with racism. Now everybody's talking about race. It's a big story about some some shooting, a cop killing somebody. Now everybody's dealing with that. And it's every time. It's the media who brings us this shit because it's they're part of the whole thing that's causing this. And we lash out at each other and not at the media. I always talk about this. We got to understand where this stuff is coming coming from or who's causing it because we chilling most people just falling back and they be you know in their own bag chilling mind their own business and boom we hit with something that we got to deal with i mean just look at all the shock we've been dealing with over the last couple of years all the people dying and all the shootings and everything like that we as black people we've been through a lot since obama became president seriously and that's by design that is by design and um they're gearing up for something it seems like i'm hoping you know, um, with so many people becoming conscious, not just black people, white people as well, with the energy is spinning. I mean, you can, you can tell it's spinning in a different direction and it's almost to an unknown direction. And they probably understand that too. And they're probably trying to change some things so that the future fits, uh, the reality that they want to create. But we got to be vigilant. We got to keep, you know, educating ourselves and understanding what's going on, putting this information out. And, um, you know, thinking positive, you know, not even thinking negative and not thinking about them winning, thinking about us winning and understanding what's going on. So I think eventually, just because they have for so long, one, been dominating that, you know, they're going to fall. We can't stay up on top forever. Eventually we will win. And uh, this is all this stuff. Everything that we do is leading to that and waking people up and getting the the knowledge of what's going on into the energies of these beings. You know, everybody who watch. And, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, everybody remember and, you know, take notes and and just understand and let this stuff soak in and understand about the importance of this math. I think that um, when you. um. When you go and do the research on just geometry and uh, what they call sacred geometry and science and everything like that, when you start looking at this stuff for yourself, you'll be able to see the really uh, deep importance of it. Stuff that I can't really get into or have the time to get into in this DVD, in this video. So all that being said, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch and thank you guys for purchasing and supporting you know what i do i can't i can't do this stuff without y'all and I, I really can't and i see uh i get a lot of messages from people thanking me for the stuff that i put out and the content and everything like that people got um ideas and everything like that i'm going to actually uh put up a video about questions uh that people want to ask so uh you guys are going to know first um i'll put up a video it's going to be since so many people have so many questions from everywhere around the world I'm going to, uh, the email is going to probably be something like questions for Merkaba at gmail.com or something like that. I'm going to have people send in like a picture and their question. And I'm going to do a video probably once a week answering questions, uh, and put up people picture and ask the question, uh, answering their questions or what have you. Try to do something like that because people have some good questions. And I think that, that, uh, a lot of people, uh, have the same questions as well. And I want to try to answer them. Uh, on things that pertain to the information that I put out already or, you know, just random stuff. If I can answer it, I'll answer it. But uh, it's something that I prob I'm probably going to end up doing because it's just so many questions. And um, a lot of them are good and people need to understand them as well. So I'm going to be doing that. And um, again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch and purchase. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next video.